answer, we move on to the next question. So what are the requirements to get a work visa and um, all other documents to get into China um, legally, preferably? Right. Well, um, yeah, I, I like that you say legally, right? So um, let's uh, like we're not going to discuss like the ways to get here illegally, I guess, right? So let's talk about the legal process. China is huge, right? There are like many different provinces, and um, the fact is that every province has its own regulations and rules when it comes to hiring foreigners, right? For example, the province of Beijing will have these regulations. The province of Tianjin, where I'm at right now, they will have some other regulations, right? Um, the general rule, like the rule of a thumb, um, you need to have at least bachelor degree. It mm -hmm. doesn't have to be, um, it doesn't have to be with languages or like um, literature. It can be economics. It has to be BA at least, right? Um, two years of experience in the field of teaching, and uh, any teaching certificate such as TEFL, TESOL with uh two hundred twenty hours plus on it at least oh, right? right so as, as for TEFL, as for That's TEFL, what they they increase the amount of hours right because when i went to china yeah. uh the requirement was like 120 hours well it, it's still 120 so when, when i say 120 plus it means that 120 at least right like the more the okay. better obviously yeah and again, so they changing laws like China is well known for changing the immigration laws like quarterly, right? So they have the uh, the party gathering like I think uh, was that three times a year, right? And uh, immigration law gets updated all the time. For example, if a couple of years ago having a bachelor and uh, two years of experience was enough, you know, to apply for a visa. Right now, TEFL is a must-have. You cannot apply, again, legally, you cannot apply legally for a job if mm -hmm. you don't have TEFL, BA, and uh, two years of experience. All right. So that's super important to know because uh, many people want to go to China uh, without any uh, experience, without any uh, education, and yeah. they they still expect that they they are going to get a lot of money um, and do right. uh, not that much. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. It was the case? Um, it was the case. Let's say five years ago when I first got there. Five years ago, um, you were able to get to China at the age of nineteen, right? Without a degree, without any experience without any TEFL or TESOL certificates, like pretty much speaking a decent English, because the demand was there, right? The demand was there just pretty much for any foreign nationality to be in the classroom in front of the kids and deliver the class. That was the case five years ago. But I mean, every year gradually, um, they filter, they filter the stream of foreigners that flows into China and they're making rules more strict. And um, so for, again, so we're talking about legal stuff, right? As I said before, like degree, TEFL, and uh, and experience. If anyone says otherwise, like they're lying to you, right? They're lying to you. If somebody says, hey, no worries, like no experience, no TEFL, welcome, we'll hook you up, right? Like, I mean, that um, it's it will be illegitimate. It will not be legal. My advice, like if you need to know, if you need to know like what are the requirements, go to the government website. That's the only resource you need to have in order to get like the uh, the full picture, the big picture of the documents that you need to be having upon entering. So government websites. I think we will link to um, we will have like some links later on, right? We yeah, on that? yeah. I I think that we will do that after the session in the comments yeah. to this video on Facebook and YouTube because um, yeah, yeah, we we just didn't think about it uh, ahead. And yeah, we will just give you all of the links uh, because yeah. just simply because uh, all uh, different uh, provinces in China have different uh, rules. All right. It's, so I'll give you an example. I give you an example. Like for example, um, just the last week, um, I'm in this group chat, right? And uh, these two individuals are having an argument, right? So one individual is saying, "Well, it's impossible to get a visa, a teaching visa, in China." Another individual is saying, well, I'm in China and I'm on the work visa right now. The other one is saying, well, I'm in China also, but I cannot get one. It's it's against the law. 
And then I'm, I'm looking at their resumes and profiles and I realized that, you know what, she's from Shanghai and she's from, um, what was that? Mm, Changchun, right? Two provinces, yeah. south, uh, south and north, right? So they are arguing about things that, that it's not even a thing, right? So they have different regulations, different laws, right? Both are right. The one is saying that it's impossible to get a teaching visa. Correct. In Shanghai, you cannot do that. The one who is from uh, Harbin, Ch uh, Changchun, yeah, she can get the visa. So that's what I'm trying to explain. And um, are you talking about non-native speakers or native speakers? I'm talking about everyone. So it, it actually uh, doesn't depend uh, on um, the origin. Like um, native speakers and non-native speakers have equal rights, right? 100%, 100%. Okay, so yeah. that's interesting yeah. to know yeah. because... Yeah. So, so before we move any further, um, native and non-native, like school will, have, um, school will have it written on their website, like natives only, right? The province... Mm -hmm where you're applying for a job, we'll have it on their government website. Uh, let, for example, natives only. If you want to obtain like English teaching position, you have to be native. You have to be like from South Africa, New Zealand, Australia, Canada, US or, or UK, right? That's the case. But a lot like, for example, but many, many provinces, right? In order to become an English teacher, let's say in early childhood education, so I'm talking about kindergarten, so I'm talking about primary school, maybe. It's not a requirement right now. It's not a requirement. So you have, again, you have to go to the government website and you have to read into that, right? Okay, so um, work visas are possible for non-native speakers. 100%, yeah, I'm on one, yeah. I'm on one, All yeah. right, so, so that's yeah. the most important point, I believe, uh, because yeah. uh, many people still, be, uh, still can't uh, find a solution how to get yeah. to China just because they are not native speakers or they yeah. don't uh, hold those uh, passports from native speaking countries. Yeah. But it's actually not like that. So, so Eva, again, like, uh, so as I said before, do your research, right? China has, I'm sorry, I'm bad with geography, like but I'm not sure how many provinces are in China, but there are many, right? And each province will have its own regulation. In some provinces, like for example, I know that um, places like Beijing, since it's a capital, right, it will be challenging to get a uh, work visa for a non-native speaker. But again, it will be challenging to get a uh, visa that will say English teacher. It doesn't mean that you cannot get a visa that will say teacher. That's a Hell difference. Yeah. That's a difference too, right? That's right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, guys, uh, number one rule uh, about uh, going to China is just do your research before um, you apply for jobs there and make sure you um, go to governmental websites and check all of the requirements um, related to uh, provinces you uh, consider because there are a lot of them and uh, if you choose like the the biggest ones uh, like Shanghai or uh, Beijing um, it, it can be challenging that's correct yeah that's correct again for example if you're dealing with the agent right and agent says hey don't worry you know what like we'll get your visa no problem in two weeks like you want to ask your agent can I please see some proof can I please see some government articles to support what you're talking about, right? Like, can you please send me some links, right? And then if the agent ends up selling you some, uh, end up sending you some uh, some article from WeChat, blurry from 2015, ignore that. You have to let that person go. They just want to make money. Okay. Oh, hundred. Or, or if they're saying like, oh, you know what? Um, I can't find this article right now, but I'll send that to you tomorrow. I have to double check it with my friend. If you're hearing any of that noise, like that uh, you don't want to be a part of this. Yeah, it's generally. ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and and for example, if you still want to go to China, you um, ignore the rules and you don't get uh, this work visa. Yeah. Um, and you find yourself uh, being in China illegally, then mm -hmm. what might happen? Well, uh, the range of penalties they have for working in China illegally or being in China illegally, it goes anywhere from fine. Fine can be anywhere from 
I think you're paying 500 per day RMB for overstaying. It's not important. So pretty much it can go anywhere from fine to deportation to um, incarceration. They can lock you up for 30 days. You can actually end up uh, in Chinese jail. Gosh. Yeah. So guys, just make sure yeah, you check out friends, all the friends rules. involved in all this uh, scenarios. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So let's move on to the next. Thanks so much for watching. We are ITTT, the leading provider for TEFL and TESOL training courses. If you like this video, please subscribe by clicking the button down here and click on any of the videos here on the left for more interesting teaching tips for getting certified to teach English abroad and online.